This week over at Tradecaster.com, I got an amazing opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with AK47, who has an incredible win percentage over 90% and helps tons of other traders over at Tradecaster. So I'm really excited and was grateful for the opportunity to speak with them this week. And here's that conversation with him. Well, hey, man, I'm glad. Thanks for uh, joining, doing a dual stream with me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, yeah, no, no problem. Like, I love doing this stuff. And the main thing would be just helping out other traders really more, more, um, mostly than anything. So. Yeah, man. Right on. No, it's been, it's been, uh, oh, as you hear my rooster of a dog. Um, see, I, you got all the dogs. You understand. Come here, Barrett. Oh, my gosh. Right, literally right. Hold on, hold on, Joe. Hold on. Kidding me, mate. I thought my face was pretty damn gorgeous, if you ask me myself. Dude, dude I have, um, so my, my dishwasher's been broken for like a month, and uh, literally the appliance guy decides to show up right now, of course. So, um, I, I know, yeah, exactly right. So, um, anyways, man, no, dude, I have been enjoying streaming. I'll tell you what, as a new, new uh, trader, it's been helpful to me. You know, it's like it holds me accountable to not trade like a freaking idiot. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially when you first start. When I first started streaming, it was only on Fridays for Dex. So I, I, I very rarely took any trades. Oh, yeah, really? I just tell most traders I just don't trade on Fridays. And I really didn't trade a lot on Fridays. But, yeah, it, it took a while to get. But then it just helped me out. I mean, I was already that way. You know, I've always been that two to three, four trader or two to three, four trades a day. But, yeah, it definitely helps you out as a trader becoming a streamer. And that way you have to be you know, more accountable about what you do and how you take your actions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Dude, I, I wasn't going to trade today. And it's so funny. So, normally I have, I don't know if you can see my charts, but I normally have like a five minute, a 30, and a one hour on my charts here. But I've been changing it to a two minute first thing in the morning uh for the bell and i totally forgot that i didn't change it over to a five minute so i saw one of my setups and so i traded it really fast and then as i was in i was like son of a bitch i'm on a two minute time frame <laughs> had to get out of it at least i had, i only traded 25 shares so i took a whopping 13 dollar loss but that's all i've traded today i just wanted to be i didn't want to go into the weekend with some huge loss you know what i mean i oh, eat I, I traded in pre market and was done for the day, and I'm glad I didn't, didn't trade the, the, the chop that was uh, the first hour or two of the day. And really, kind of has been the rest of the day, depends on what you're trading. There hasn't been any that any really great setups besides NFL X NVIDIA. There's been a couple, but yeah, it's been super choppy, right? Um, last, last couple of days have been that way Wednesday, Thursday, and then again today has been for whatever reason, it's just been kind of gross out. Yeah, for, for me, like I've been on the weekends, like doing my back testing and studying and everything like that, almost to a point where I, I probably need to take a step back from it. You know, my, my brain is mush right now. Um, but, you know, I, I, of course, I'm looking at charts that are that are completed. Right. So a lot easier to back test that versus watching charts that are moving throughout the day. Right. And so I've been I've been kind of looking at the one hour candlestick confirmations lately and trying to see how those move and if I can get confirmation. Like today, all my all my one hour candlesticks hit everything. And so that was like really, really cool to see and watch those stocks move as it hit my one hour candlestick confirmation uh, trade that I, I would be doing. So, um, but yeah, I haven't traded that much. Um, just, just watching to see if my strategy would actually work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, you, got, you definitely got to be doing that kind of stuff. I mean, over and over. And, I mean, I've tracked and journaled for three plus years. So if you don't do that, it's going to be a long, long journey. And I, I guarantee if I did not do that for the three years that I did it for and as extensively as I did it, I would not be where I'm at right now. Yeah. So well, again, I don't know if you can see this. This is my trading journal. So I go in here. I put in notes. I've got my time frame that I made the trade in. I've got why did I make the trade? What time did I enter the trade? I know you and I have talked about that in in one of our you know some of our one on ones. You know, but yeah, I track everything. You know, because I want to see. Okay, you, you know, most of my losses are coming before. 10 a.m. Okay, stop trading before 10 a.m., you know, or most of my losses are coming after 2 p.m. Okay, don't trade then. You know what I mean? And so just that has been really helpful as well, kind of know when the optimal time for me to trade is, you know? Yeah, that's what I, again, that's what I tell, and it's, it, I know a lot of traders don't unfortunately put in the effort that they need to, but if they did, and I will say NFL X here, that upper VWAP band is skyrocketing up here for the most part, going up pretty nicely, almost up to four, uh, 575. 
I would bet NFL like does get up to that. Uh, my oh, was it five seventy five? We talked about it earlier. Maybe it was five eighty. Uh, five eighty, but this does have room to five seventy five in my opinion by end of day at this point. Yeah, look at that. Holy crap! I was watching uh, NFL X. It started to form a shooting star on the thirty minute, which I'll always trade shooting stars on a thirty minute um, or hammers. But you know, again, you got to wait for candlestick confirmation. You can't just jump in on it. And then uh, you could see on this last thirty minute from ten to ten thirty, it didn't get the shooting star, and it's been continuing to run. So imagine that was something I did when I first started trading is I was anticipating the move and not waiting for the candlestick confirmation and just truly waiting for that confirmation has been a huge change in my trading as well. Especially, you know, as a, as a beginner, when I first started trading, I was like, well, I got to get the best entry. I got to get the best entry. Well, I would rather get the right entry as far as, you know, confirming that my, my uh, theory is going to work. Versus getting the so-called best entry as far as a price. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's most traders, you know, I feel like I said, that's why I try to only sp talk about my doing my one-on-ones and how it helps, with, you know, 200 plus traders and for traders to come on over because I know now the psychological and mental side of what traders are doing and that is probably 80% of traders are doing that. They're, they're, they're trying to be the, the person that's going to, you know, influence, I think, essentially a new way. Of yeah. And go, and it go down. Well, it should go up. Well, this is where it's going to do this. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, yeah. That's not, you don't want to be that as a stock trader, you know, and that's how unfortunate a lot of traders are to begin with. And it doesn't matter where, you know, what market condition you're in. That's just the mindset of this for whatever reason for stock traders early on is they want to predict where the move is going to go. Yeah. And just wait let it show you where it's yep yeah exactly that was definitely something i did back then is just i was trying to predict it you know instead of just waiting for it to tell me it you know i said this in my lobby as well on one of my streams but my dad told me i'm a big sports fan um and my dad told me don't don't force the game let the game come to you right you know and, and that's that's something that i kind of repeat uh you know to myself all over and hey breaking away from stock stuff for a second i know you're wearing your nuggets hat and i'm wearing my Knicks stuff I had to give you shit because we kicked your freaking ass yesterday by 38 points. Yeah, I know. It was really weird, too, because the Nuggets are on this nice little overall. Like, they've been winning a lot recently, and I was like, how do you lose by that much to the Knicks? <laughs> hey, we're good. Dude, since we traded for OG and Anobi, we're 11-2, and two, and we're the best defense in the league. We're holding teams under 100 points in today's NBA is stupid. Oh, that is Dell for sure, 100%. But that's the thing is, how long are you going to do it? Well, yeah, but, you know, right now it looks good, you know, so I'll I'll take it. Right now it looks good, I'll take it, you know, let's see if we can continue this run. But so right now we're we're a solid team, and I was like, oh, man, I got to wear my Knicks stuff today when I'm talking to talking to AK. I was hoping he'd wear a Nuggets hat or something. So, anyways, good good game yesterday. I thoroughly enjoyed that ass whooping. Uh, <laughs> I know, because who's toting around that uh, championship trophy? Hey, I know, I know, hey. Kudos to you guys. You guys are awesome. Jokic is just a freaking beast. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I know. That guy is a lot. I never thought he was going to kind of accumulate to what he's come to. I'm like, and that just shows you. I mean, if you look at him in his first, he was never this good is my point, you know. And I'm like, yeah. I he was like a stock traders team, you know. People are going to start, and you may not be that great at first, but that's the thing. It's a long road if you want to. It's not like, well, didn't get it in the first year. Well, yep. it's not like, right, you know, like you got to keep pushing. So no, that's. Like, that's a great example. When did when did Jokic actually start playing? Like what year through his career did he start kind of hitting his stride? I'd say like four years ago. Four like four because he's been in the league. People don't know this. Y'all look it up. Like it's so funny. <laughs> like how long he's been in the league? He's been in the league for a while, like a while. People don't realize that. Um, they think he's like just got in the league. Yeah, so no. Been, since, let's see. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen. That's what I thought. So yeah, he was in the league since two thousand fifteen. So nine years. Yeah. yeah. So so it took him five years to become an MVP caliber player. Right, right, right around the end. Because it was about, uh, I would say about year three or four, and he, that's what I was looking at his stats. About three or four, and he started averaging a double-double. But it wasn't until year five, and all of a sudden those assists, <coughs> Did, four, it didn't know the system. You know, that's, that's a that, seriously, that's a great point. And I think about those types of things, too. And, you know, there's a few people I follow on Twitter, and as I said, it's like, they say, how long does it take a doctor to get a degree? You know, how long does it take... You know, a lawyer and all those people, you know, it, it takes a long time. And yet here we are as new stock traders, you know, we think we could just jump in, you know, three, four, six months into it and think we're going to be, you know, rock stars, you know? Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's, that's every trader. Yeah. Now, of course, me, myself, but that 
he just had and then, luckily I humbled myself down early on I was like, dude I mean I, what I was working and what I was getting paid back in the day I was just out of college and my degree was not really providing for a lot of money in the side jobs etc I'm like man if I could just make you know at the time I was like, man, if I could just make 500 a week if I could just make a thousand a week you uh-huh. know, I had such you know, and so I luckily, and also, and there's a lot that are like that out there, but it, that's still hard to do with a small account. And so it's like, hey, and then, then literally my first goal when I first started trading, because I just wanted to substitute one of my incomes, which was like 1500 to $2,000 a make was what I was making from it. And I was like, man, if I can make $1,500 to $2,000 a month from stock trading, which still took me a few months in to start getting there, but that's it. You know, it's like, I wasn't like, I need to get make $5,000 a month. Right? Yeah. I could just make fifteen hundred to two k a month. That's nothing, really, if you think about it. Yeah. Um, I still didn't get there at first with a three k account, but about five six months in, I started getting almost consistently, and then after that, it was a done deal. You know, it was like I, then I really started to make money big time toward the end of that first year. But that's it. It's not like, and that's the thing. I could have given up in that first few months of going live again. Like, well, here I go. I'm not making even fifteen hundred to two thousand. But I even saw it as like, man, I made eight hundred or whatever it was at first. I made nine hundred dollars this month. I mean, you know, and the next month, oh, I made twelve hundred dollars. You know, or whatever. And that's those small little goals that you need to applaud yourself for. Like, no, you're not getting your true goal, but it gets to the point. Like right now, where I said NFL X to seven or five seventy five, and boy, we're about to hit it at some point today. I yeah, know. yeah, I see that. Well, spy it, spy is at a at a high again. We're at four eighty nine right now. Yeah, I, well, someone asked me yesterday too during lunch. They said, "AK, what's your take on spy? We're we gonna crack four eighty five or back through four ninety tomorrow?" And I said, "I think we're back, my gut says we're back up. We're not gonna go down. We're going back up. It's, it's through four ninety. It's up to four ninety or through it." Yeah. You know, this morning when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to put that out there. But that's the thing. You At first, did I or could I have ever known or seen any of that? No, I was so stuck in a one-minute time frame and like uh-huh. so puppy and let me just get five, ten cents here. I never saw big pictures, never saw more than 30, 45 minutes or an hour out. And it was so zoomed in, and that's where it takes time to get to that, and that's where you become a good trader is when you zoom out. You yeah. to get out the picture. That, that's, that's for me. Like I recently, gosh, what was it, about two months ago, I'm like, well, okay, let me look at the five minute. You know, I went from one minute to three minute to five minute. Now I'm trading like the 30 in the one hour, you know? It's like the larger time frames I go, the better confirmation I'm getting of what direction we're going, you know? Um, like, like again, I was talking I was talking about this uh, in my chat today. Like, look at, well, let's not go to the spy. Um, Google, for example, okay? Like Google, again, I don't know if you guys can see my chart, but on the one hour here, we had a green candle from six to seven, and we continued to get green candles all pre-market, and we actually closed on a green candle on the one hour. Um, the hour before pre-market or uh, going into the markets, what I really look for, and we closed above a key level on the one hour. And so what I've been doing is I've been finding like a key level of support, putting a line there, and then testing to see, okay, if we get that, and then go back to the upside. Again, on this one on Google, you can see I put a key level here at 152.79, and we hit a low of 152.77, and then we bounced right back up and closed at 153.60. You know, but on that, because I'm basing the trade off the one hour, I'm getting such a low, low um, entry, my risk is minimalized versus the potential reward. And so that's what I've been studying on the one hour chart, if that makes sense. Bro, I can tell everybody, you've got to figure out what's best for you. You know what I'm trading all day long. Yeah. So it's the same thing, repetitive. It, that's what you have to get into. It's like if you go to get water, you're not like, well, this time I'm going to, you know, it's like you do the same thing. Every time you go get water, you do the same exact thing. You know, you don't change that process. So um, you've got to have the same process day in, day out. You yeah. The same thing, day out, you're going to get better and better and better and better and better and better and better. Again, again, if you're on a cooking show and you have all these different meals you got to cook every single <laughs> night, you're never going to get good at cooking. But if you do the same meal every night, five days a week or seven days a week, whatever you want to call it, however many days in a row for however on in of course i said five days a week since you know, stock trading you're a lot better at that one thing than if you just did it once a week or tw- you know what i mean if you did it every day yeah blah, 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 that's it you're gonna get really good at it and that's why if you track and journal you'll start figuring out what you're good at and that one or two things that's all you need to do whatever you're not good at your win percentage is lower that needs to go out the window for now you don't uh-huh. have to worry about just not good at it and that's fine we're not going to be good at every single setup and strategy you need to find what you're good at and replicate it. I, I think for me right now, I, I've been bouncing around too many different strategies. That's something that I'm working on right now with myself. Um, and again, for people that don't know, I've only been trading full-time for seven months. 
you know, so, you know, I'm working through a lot of different things right now, but I think that's something that I, I'm still struggling with and, and trying to get better at is I'm jumping around still to too many strategies, you know, and I need to find, find something that works for me and really stick to it and dedicate, you know, a month or two months or three months only trading that strategy and see what the results are versus continuing to jump, you know, from strategy to strategy, you know? Right, yeah, and I just had a shelf crack in my lobby. I had a couple different shelves. On CRBP? Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, yeah, so you know, and I do want to get into before we get too far down the line because I know New England trader wants to know and other traders the opening bell stuff, and I know you want to get into the candlestick confirmation. So whenever you want to get into that, you let me know, and I'm ready to kill it. Well, so so let me ask you this: on your morning, I actually wrote that down on your morning, like uh, morning bell trades, right? How do you manage your risk? Uh, just have a stop loss. I mean, essentially overall. So I just put the stop loss in, and if it's, it hits the stop loss, I got to get out. I mean, that, that there, to me, that's that. I mean, there's multiple ways. I guess you can define how do you manage your risk. I have a, I have an entry area, I have a target area, and that target area then creates a stop loss because I want to have a two to one ratio. I go to the charting, find something in charting that lets me know this needs to be the stop loss. As in, if I'm shorting, I want to go up, find something that it should fail at, and reverse back down. That keeps my two to one ratio, or even better. So sometimes I'll have a three to one ratio, and that means I have a tighter stop loss. But that's fine with me. I'd rather have a tighter stop loss than oh well, that that's not going to fail there. It may not fail so all the way up here. Well, next thing you know, I have a one to one. Well, that that's terrible, and I'll never trade that in my life. And so. Um, you know, you look at any example. If you go back to CRBP, my alert this morning was 1550. I said over 1550 candlestick confirmation, which I do in pre market stick to candlestick confirmation. Uh huh. And so on my chart, if you're looking at my lobby, I'll go back to pre market in the one minute time frame. You're going to see where my, well, it should still be there. Well, now we've run so much today, you can't even really see it there. I'll zoom out a little bit more. But you can see where we're now the blue line of support. I said over that line, essentially, candlestick confirm over it. I'm going to go in for a long up through 16 and above it. So what I do is I just wait and I get that first candle to confirm and it's right there. My entry was actually like 1578. I didn't get that good of an entry, but it's all good. So you can see this candle opened at 1579. Okay. So the, it was 1578. So I'm waiting for this squeeze through 16. Because at this point we're at high of day. We most likely now again now. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's going to go up. No. And so let's just say where's my stop loss at, right? And so I what I do is if my target is like 1650. Anything over that's gravy. So really, I'm going to base my stop loss off 1650. If my entry is, is set as 15, we'll just call it 1580. I know it's 1578. We'll call it 1580. My target is now 76. So I want no more than a 35 cent stop loss because then my 2 to 1 ratio is out the window and it's jacked. And so what I'll do is I'll just come down and I did. And you can see where that blue line of support is. It's uh -huh. 1520. So 1525 is right at about in my opinion, it's too far away, right? Like that, that ends up becoming like a 40 cent stop. That's, that's just too far in my opinion. And so I'm not going to give it all the way down, most likely to 1523 majority of the time. But I will here in pre-market, mainly because it was the old high of day resistance, and I feel like that's a good stop loss area. Now, does it keep my two to one ratio intact perfectly? No, but that is my stop loss because there's really nothing else I could say where else should it be at? Like what maybe 1550, but then it could come down to like say 1537, lower shadow, wick right back on up, and it's back at 1555, 1560. And I got out because it cracked 1550, and I'm like, damn it, wow, ah, you know, that happens to me too much. So I do want to give these stocks a little bit of breathing room, um, in my opinion, even at the opening bell, because we get a lot of movement around. Now, I was out of this in pre market as we got right here through my, my, this was kind of my target area, which was really about 16. You can see here, 1676, which ends up being support, but that was it. So I am looking to, who are you looking for? Einstein is not in here. Einstein is not in here. <laughs> um, look for, uh, my, my point being, so candlestick confirmation there, I was in, so you can see why I'm getting in there. My target's up here at about 1650, just a hair above it. So what I do is I do the two to one ratio, and I'll just come down into charting and see exactly what my stop loss should be, and that's going to be my risk. I know it's hard okay. to see here. And, and I see you're on a one minute time frame, so you always on a one minute in pre market? Small caps. 100%. Small caps, yeah. Because then you go over to ACL win and look at my other small cap play this morning. What do you consider a small cap, AK? Anything under $15, $10, 15 Okay. My micro cap to me would be under $1. That's just me. So I'll, anything over $20, bucks, i will start considering a, a, a mid cap play. Mid cap, yep. Okay. So right here was my, and it was, I, 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 this is kind of funny, it wasn't the best of setups, but this had already cracked, and I'll go back and show you your own Akon, already cracked a trend line, cracked the trend line up through here. Then it cracked this little area shelf, so you uh -huh. see it bounce, here, bounce there. 
I missed all these like an idiot, but it's all good. I know Akon almost always, always, always comes down. Well, that's the larger shelf right there. Right. And then so then I see this micro guy right here getting built in. And I'm morning voice alert, and it came out literally at 45 after I said short ACO win, 350, whatever you want to call it, shelf crack down to 325 uh -huh. and down to $50. And so, again, let's just go straight to the stop loss. Who cares about my target? Obviously, I got hit, baby, as always. We ain't got to worry about my – and that's the thing, too. You get to this rate, you don't worry about – I mean, yes, you do have to worry about your stop loss and risk, but the majority of the time, your trades go in your direction, and you don't have to worry about your stop loss. And then you get better at it because what you're going to get better over time, like I did here or, or will do – like my stop loss for this, and I'll get to it, is 365. Well, my overall target was $3. My entry here earlier was like 342 or 341, I think it was. Um, right around right through here because I started just scaling in and this is one of those ones where I didn't wait for candlestick confirmation because in my point I just know this is going down. It's already below uh -huh. 350. Shelf's already cracked. I could continue to wait for it to crack under and then I could have got in at 336. I just started scaling in right here a thousand shares at a time. I was just slowly See, scaling okay. in. Yeah, I'm just like slowly scaling into this knowing it's going to crack back on down. There's really no shelf technically to crack there. How, and and you're, doing, you're doing shares. How many shares are you typically doing on something like that? Uh, usually 3000 to 7000 Depends on how many, uh, how expensive they are and how confident I am in the trade. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, and, and then, so my, if my overall target is around $3. So 40 cents away, we'll just call it from my entry. I know I can't go more than 20 cents up or I'm going to have a, a not a good two to one ratio. Uh -huh. I just went right here and I go, oh, wow, look, makes a lot of sense. Bounce play at 365. Bounce play at 365. So that means when it comes back up, 365-ish area should be a good resistance and a fail. So if it does come back up, I should get a rejection and fail from there. I also love when my entry area is also a good failure. I said 350 when I was alerting it, even though it's kind of here below it, I was saying 350 because it's a nice whole round number. And under that, watch for a short. I knew I had a great short. Then when I took half of my profit here at my first target, which was 25, when it comes back up to my entry area and fails and comes back down, that is a very, 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 good. very good sign. Yeah. It's most likely and go to new, low, and pre-market, which it ended up doing. Um, so every single time, I'm finding, as soon as I find my entry, I already know my target. So I can immediately do some quick uh, some quick math. And technically, I usually already am going to know where my stop loss is because I'm already knowing, charting, I already see this, and I'm going it probably around this 365 mark. Maybe if I want to go up any higher, 375, 380. But then at that point, you don't really have that great of a you know, two-to-one ratio anymore. Um, it starts getting a little bit worse. But... That's where I tell traders when I kind of do my one-on-ones and say that would have to be your end-all, be-all. If you let that get above 380, you're just not that technically savvy and a dis disciplined trader, and you're going to have a lot of big-ass losses if you let a stock like this get over 380 over and over and over because you're just going to let it run. Oh, that's the top. Okay, no, maybe it's 420. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's – right? And then you're just adding in and adding in and adding in. Well, you still – yeah, I mean, for me, finding those shelves has been something I feel like I'm getting a lot better at is finding those shelves. But – you know, I'm still being hesitant on pulling the trigger when it when it hits that shelf. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, I guess other than just going smaller shares, I'm trying to figure out myself how to get over that. You know, because I'll look, I'll look back at my charts. I'm like, John, you freaking nailed it. I mean, look at NVDA. I don't know if you can see my chart, but NVDA came right down to my level of 60604. It hit that, and then we bounced right back up to 616. I mean, that's a $10 move based off my levels right there, you know? Well, yeah, you'll, you'll start seeing that more and more and more. Trust me, remember when I first started seeing that happen? I was like, yeah, that hit right off my line. Yeah. Um, and real quickly to uh, New England Trader. Candlestick confirmation is really, 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 really easy. I will not only post a link in chat real quickly. It's over my AK-47 lessons. There's candlestick confirmation. So here is a link to it. Here is the CC, CC, what's that? That's actually XX. CC lesson. So you can go watch that if you want to. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you what this looks like. So uh, anyone in chat, when you're looking for candlestick confirmation, you find a good area of support shelf like this at 365, right? And it's bouncing, it's bouncing, it's bouncing. Your first candle to close and open outside of said area of support is your entry for the short. Opposite would be earlier, like we were going over with CRBP and my long that I took, which was what? Candlestick confirmation over 1550. The first candle I see to confirm open and close candles above that zoom out a little bit right here i'm in for the long first candle to close and open candlestick confirmation the first candle to close and open that's your candlestick confirm for the move up and the next leg up does that make sense newly english reader anyone else in chat and so at the opening bell and i don't know if you're looking in uh john i'm always looking uh at a three minute time frame at the opening bell I'll okay three minutes on the on the larger caps ak 
in the larger cast. Okay. And we'll go back to say I've been, I've been chopped out, unfortunately, on, t- on Wednesday and Thursday. We have gotten chopped here at the opening bell, which has kind of kind of sucked a little bit because I've been killing opening bell trades. But let's go back to the last opening bell trade I took on NVDA here, which is going to be right here on Tuesday, which was gorgeous. And all I'm doing is identifying the same thing. We see a bounce at 595. We see a bounce at 595. We see bouncing in after hours at the end of the day in a pre-market pretty close to 595 without really ever pushing over 598 in pre-market. Letting me know once we come down in market, we, it's not like we went to, to 600 and we're reversing the last 10 minutes yeah. of the opening bell, right? We're not, no, no, no. We're, we're just slowly matriculating. And I know Cousin Greg loves that word, and I love that word as well. We're slowly matriculating down to the crack area. I love it. And so once we go down, I'm looking for the lowest lower shadow that I can see, usually typically now. In for it to break. Minute. Right. Yeah. And so what I'll, so I'll go back and I go, what shadow below 495 is there? Oh, shit, there's not one. We could crack. <laughs> you know, like, uh-huh. this is going to roll. And I was, the only thing I was worried about in my morning voice alerts was 490, like right through here. And I didn't know where it would stop at, 494, maybe it's 493. But I knew, and I said we had room all the way down to the day before his low of day of 490, essentially 50, 491. That was my main target area. And the main reason why, if you go back, you see nothing under 495. And to so hold it up, it, yeah. I see no wicks or nothing under 495. In a 15-minute time frame, at that opening bell, I am going, as soon as I see it, I give it 20, 30 cents. So as soon as I see 494.65 right here. You're in short. Step, boom, in, 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 in. Immediately jumping in that because I don't want to wait for confirmation in, in any time frame. It is going to flush. Because there's no wicks. Nothing. Nothing to hold it up. Yep, exactly. Okay. 20%. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. And we'll go back to NFL. Same thing on that day. I was in two trades at once on Tuesday at the opening bell. You're going to see the same exact setup as far as I'm looking for support, and then I see nothing below it, and nothing, no wicks, none of that, right? So right here, I see 492.75, 492.70, or whatever, whatever you call it. I call it 492.75. I know it's really hard to see now because yep. it's only gone up. No, no, yeah, I see it, yeah. But then there's nothing to hold it up until 488, right? There's no wicks, uh-huh. there's nothing. The thing I see is this pre-market trash, and I'm like, well, okay, that's still two bucks down to 498. Yeah, that's a lot of- take that. And then I got- then I got two more bucks to move down to 488. Uh huh. Right? I got four bucks to move at the opening bell. Sign me the F up. Yeah. No, no wicks, nothing under that area. It's a just go. Go, go. go. Yeah, and you got 100, 200 shares or how many are contracts or something. That's good money. Oh, massive. Massive yeah. money right there. Any money right there. So, yeah, you run, you know, three, four, five, and that's it. So, there's nothing to hold you up. There's no charting in pre market. See, there's my line at 9270. There's nothing under it. There's no wicks. There's no candles. It is straight down charting. Essentially, some say a gap to fill, so to speak, to 490 to 488. I'm all aboard. I'm all aboard on those, and those are the ones where you don't, you, you give it like 20, 30 cents. So, when I saw like 492.30, 492.25, right on into that. Get in. Get your ass into that trade. <laughs> And see, that's what that's what I need to kind of figure out what you're doing there because I'm waiting for I'm waiting for candles to confirmation on everything. Right, and, and most traders are because what I'll say at the opening bell is so hard to trade. I mean, even doing the one on ones, I've got traders that practice it. They first off, like me, when I do the one on ones and a lot of the ones that have booked a lot, I say, hey, don't even worry about trading the opening bell, and they say, and, they, and most agree. They would wait 15 to 30 minutes, and that's kind of my plan with them. Then get trades, then wait for it because then that's all that's all you get the rest of the day. Uh huh. It's much easier. It's much more relaxing. You don't have to go, yep. oh, you know, right? And then once you get used to that and you've got that down, then you can start paper trading slash or, uh, or uh, what, what was it calling it? Um, going FOMO size where you just go uh-huh. one, 10 shares, whatever. Like, all right, I want to practice the opening bell. I'm either going to paper it or I'm going to go in one, 10 shares just to see if I can get the feel for it. Uh-huh. I'm still going to get real money trades later on, but let's just practice the opening bell with one, you know, 10 shares or whatever it might be. And then you practice, and man, I've got traders that are getting better, and they got better, and they've gotten better. I've got some traders that now full size at opening bell, right? So you go full size later in the day, wait, just wait for plays like we talked about, wait for plays to come to you, wait for candlestick confirmation type plays, trend line crack shell, crack level breaks, whatever it might be, right? Or opening bell, you're going to have to wait on that, in my opinion. Once you feel comfortable with later on in the day and you've got that down, then go to the opening bell and start practicing that. Get in one share, get in 10 shares, and do that for a bit. You'll get it down over time like me. I never traded the opening bell. I was a small cap trader, waited for play. I always said that, waited for plays to come to me. I hated breakout plays. After I tracked in journal, I sucked my ass off in <laughs> 20 minutes and breakouts. I was like, dude, what are you doing? You want to lose or do you want to make money? Yeah. Bounce plays out for you. And so then over time, wait, it was me. Wait 30 minutes or whatever it might be, bounce play. You know, blah, 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 over and over and over. 
Then after time, look at me now. I never even traded pre-market until 2022. Uh-huh. So, you know, slowly but surely, you know, morphed your way into these trade, you know, this, these setups, so to speak. Like, wow, why am I not trading these trend liner shelf cracks at pre-market? Look at all these small cap plays that just, you know what I mean? So you're, you're moving your, essentially, your, 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 your um, setups you're trading in, in the day from small caps I was to the, you know, to pre-market and like just waiting for a shelf direct, waiting for, and then I started noticing when the VWAP on those small cap plays, you know, the play goes from one, two, three, it's up at 350, just like that from $1. And that VWAP skyrockets right up with it. It's like at, you know, 280 and the stock's at three. I'm going, oh, that VWAP caught up with ASAP. I'm watching for a trend liner shelf to build, short that son of a gun, it's going down, right? So you yeah. don't notice things over time. But at first I was waiting 30 minutes in a bounce trader. Then but so you said like 2022 so how long into your trading when did you start trading so i started trading uh in 20 uh 20 i really started trying to trade in 2016 17. so six years it took you to be trading in pre-market but i wouldn't trade that much that's why yeah. I, I, I in 2016 and 17 i may have play, placed 20 or 30 real trades it all came down to paper trading because 2016 I couldn't trade. I was always I was in my job. I just couldn't trade. I tried to. I, I I start. I first started looking at stocks essentially all of 2016. 2017 found deck, and I was almost in chat every day come middle of that year, through, throughout the rest of the year. So I would say I didn't really start watching stocks all day every day until about mid. I'd say March, April, May, somewhere in there of 2017. I, I realized and I changed my schedule around. I've got to be in chat a lot more. I've got to start watching charting. I've got to start you know going over plays more. I really didn't start taking it seriously until it took a thousand plus dollar loss in my three thousand dollar account. So like a thirty three uh, percent, yeah, yeah, yeah. In August of twenty seventeen, of chasing a, a, a third halt up, and I was like, dude, okay, you've been kind of trying to do this for two years now, so to speak, right? You first learned about it about two years ago. What are we doing? You know, and that's when I said you got to go back to paper trading. You need to go to you need to you need to uh, journal. You need to journal and track. And I started doing that heavily. And about two or three months into that, October, November of twenty seventeen, I started realizing how good I was at bounce plays after tracking and journaling. Again, like I said, and sucked at the opening bell. So I said, do this for the next two months, and I guarantee you, you're going live January first. Being the, you know, this is your kind. Of, this is your trade. This is who you are. Uh huh. Sure, should enough. I went live January first. Two years, kind of, so to speak, after I opened up my E-Trade account, which was January of 2016, became a full-time trader, and that was when, like I said, I made about twenty-four, twenty-five twenty-five thousand dollars that year with a three thousand dollar account. Um, slowly but surely, making you know about a thousand dollars a month to start off with. And by the end of that year, I was making three, four k a month. You know, or five, well, I forgot what my last. I was making a lot of money toward the end of that year compared to what I was making at the beginning of the year. So let's just say 2018, I'm really watching charts and I know what I'm doing. I'm a bounce trader, 2019, I'm a bounce trader. So at that point, those two full years, I'll give 2016, 2017, like a half a year. Let's be honest, there wasn't a lot of effort there. There was some effort, it wasn't toward the end of 2017 when I came in. So I'd say two and a half to three years after really watching charts day in, day out, I was just there. And I was, it was good, but I was an 80% bounce trader and that's all I was. 2020, early part of 2020, I start. I come up with the halt strategy. Then the trend line cracks come into play. Then the shelf cracks come into play later that year. So by the end of 2020, just like that, I go from a bounce trader to a bounce trader halt strategy, which is a bounce trade. Uh huh. To trend line cracks and shelf cracks. Yeah. And you know, then you're adding on to there. Um, but like you were saying, I didn't still though. I still didn't trade opening bell or pre market until 2022. Oh, know? so so I, again, six years into that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what, I mean, so outside of paper trading and journaling and stuff like that, what was like your final, like, uh, uh, like kind of your aha moment? Um, trend line cracks. Besides tracking and journaling, like, dude, why, why haven't you been doing this? Uh huh. The big thing to me was because I was doing that and doing recaps or that, I guess, is a side thing because it's kind of tracking and journaling, but I was doing recaps, kind of like <laughs> what you're doing now. Uh -huh. Going over plays daily and, and kind of holding yourself accountable. Posting stuff on Instagram and YouTube and saying what I was doing in one of those recaps, I was saying, team, the more this bounces on this trend line, it's eventually going to, and I remember stopping myself in my tracks and didn't say crack, and I was like, you idiot, you son of a retarded son of a <laughs> And I was just cussing and yelling, like, I had to go back and edit that session of the, of the before I, of course, posted it, but I was like, how, you've been alerting the perfect short for how long? Yeah. But again, tradecaster.com before that deck more trades was only small caps and long yep deck, yeah deck was all small caps back then right and so no one really had the inkling or thought to short we just didn't it was risk whatever and so i'll never forget now he just started shorting because he just got light speed then that came in my head next thing you know great casters off and run into the short side uh-huh 
Um, but that was it, you know, going over my trades day in, day out, and I was still tracking and journaling then, and was doing those recaps because I was a broadcast journalism major. Yep. wanted to do what I'm doing now, streaming. And so, like, I've got to learn to talk on the mic about stocks. I could talk about sports all day, but I need to learn the verbiage and overall how to walk through stocks. And so I was doing that, and I figured if I did that long enough, deck would then, which it happened, it worked out perfectly. I'd start to stream, but I was in one of those recaps before I was ever even a streamer. And just like hit upside the forehead and that's why i tell traders go over your trades day in day out because finally one day something's going to smack you upside the forehead mm -hmm. like that uh, and i went over i can't tell you how many times i said hey team the more it tests this trend line and doesn't go to new high day it's gonna i may have said that 500 <laughs> times I mean, at least 100 easily 100 easily 100 because i'd say it in chat and then i'd say it in those recaps afterward you know and i'm like how it took me 100 or 150 times, but it did for me to say that and look at those set setups and go, the hell you are not shorting for, bro, you know? Yeah. And then, become, then because my point being, then becomes the most valuable, the most profitable, the most consistent setup I've had a trend line crap. Hey, hey, look at, look at this really fast. I don't, again, I don't know if you see my screen. So NVDA right here just had three red candles on a five minute dumped. Look what! Look at my lines. This is how I, I'm being really proud of this. Look at my line. It literally yeah, hit this to the freaking penny, and we're getting a bounce. And so this is something I'm trying to figure out. It's like, okay, John, do you just trust that line? You enter in on it because even at this, I mean, we're already up eighty cents from that from that spot. You know, yeah. got that all the time back in 2018 and 2019 and 2020. That's what I was was a bounce trader, and I got that so much. Like when I started streaming live for Deck on Fridays, like. AK, how do you know it's not just gonna uh, knife right through that area? Uh huh. Like, uh, I'm an 85% bounce trader. Is yeah. It just doesn't, you know, just, I found, like you, you found your levels and you're, you know your levels now and you have to trust them. So, yeah, you just gotta yeah. put a limit. I, I was a limit order trader too, so much. Yes. Time, man. I was talking about that with PJ, uh, PJ Monkey over in my chat. Now, again, if you're still watching my chat, look at NVDA. Now, uh, again, I was talking to PJ about that. I like to limit order in. He's market ordering in, you know. But especially on something like NVDA, where you got a 20 cent, 30 cent spread, you know, if you just market order in, you could get a really bad entry. But you know, you know, the other thing about NVDA right now that will give me confidence is, again, I go back to this one hour time frame in this candlestick we got a huge close on this one hour candlestick i found this level here at 612.89 612.90 we're getting this bounce and i would say that we're going to continue the upside even if we close back about 616.51 you know i think that's what we're going to get on nvda right now you know and we're getting it look at that i mean we're two dollars we're two dollars above my entry on that well maybe yeah. someone needs to start doing a trade every alert challenge <laughs> well i gotta start here's the thing like in in my lobby like i'm giving all these alerts and i've been i've been trading real or you know my alerts have been really 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 good but i'm not trusting myself ak like even this like i'm not even trusting myself but then it's like but here's the thing too as a new trader just seeing that is adding to my confidence every single day Every day, it's just adding to my confidence and adding to my confidence. So then, hopefully, at one point, I'm going to grab my cojones and say, John, you're right. Just trade this. And if it drops below that, but here's my concern on my uh, stop losses, is that I wait for candlestick confirmations, and maybe you can help me with this, is because I trade a five-minute, I wait for candlestick confirmations on a five-minute. But that's too too long of a, I think, time frame to wait for a stop loss. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, so it's the same thing I'm doing. I'm doing, I'm putting myself, I'm, same with large caps. I'm, in, I'm doing my, where's my target at? Doing my ratio, doing the, you know, finding the chart. And I still stick to candlestick confirmation, but I usually typically do a three minute time frame. And also, if it gets too far, I call it the point of no return. Kind of like, right? That's what I was doing. Like, as an opening door, I call it the point of no return. So getting back to NVDA, it's back in 590. I can't wait for five candlestick confirmation or what? 595. It's 595. Uh -huh. I can't wait. I can't wait for getting some confirmation. I can't wait for, well, let's get through four or five, nine, four. I don't know, you know, no. So I give it, called the point of no return. Large cap plays is about 25, 30 cents for me. Like I just went over. So again, if it gets, let's just say for instance, right there, it doesn't bounce. It comes back through, well, okay, you know, we call it 613 is that level just to make it even. Uh -huh. So 613 starts cracking and say your stop loss is just say, we'll say it's 612. Uh -huh. It comes down to 612. It's going through, it's 11, it's you know, 1185, 1213, 1180. I'm waiting for it. Waiting for KLC confirmation, right? That thing gets it again. It's six twelve. It's a stop loss. That thing gets to about six 
eleven seventy five six eleven seventy. I'm out. I'm yeah. Out. I'm not gonna, okay. Yeah, I'm out. I'll give it fifteen twenty cents below my stop loss to kind of work around a little bit. You got to, you know, the spread on those large cap plays. You're not going to be perfect with your stop loss, but I can't tell you that literally half of my losses. Well, it's still probably at least a good, at least because I've had a couple more since, but pretty much about half of my losses in the trade earlier challenge was because I didn't stick to candlestick confirmation because my stop losses again I've gotten so good. Yeah. My stop loss is usually plenty pretty money. But I wouldn't stick to candlestick confirmation. You get a little hair over and, ah, okay, I'm going to stop out, team. Stop myself out. A lot of them were at lunch. And that thing would go right back in my direction. I'm like, oh, if I just would have stuck to candlestick yeah. confirmation. And so that's why I try my best when I'm in those to give it that 15, 20 cents above it. Okay. And then if, it, if you get over that, you've just got to let it. you got to cut it. you got to cut it. Up. Yeah. It's, okay, well, i got to wait for confirmation. Well, at that point, it could be a dollar, you know, with the momentum that some of these plays have. Yep. Yeah, and on that call right there, AK, $2 move. $2 move right there, and that happened in two minutes. Yeah, that's, that, that's where you have to, have to. Like I was going over my halt strategy earlier. That, that, imagine the halt strategy. If you're looking at CRBP, I am literally trusting the stock to, to, to get in where it halted up at. So like right here, like you know these halt strategies where you're just putting a limit order in because you trust there's going to be a gap up or you're seeing on the level two there's going to be one. So you just come in here and I just right click on my finger swing, right click, whatever, and uh, custom order. And I just put in my share right there, you know, 20, just to wait to get filled. Yeah. Trust in my chart. That trust much. it. That, yeah, because you have to get filled there. You know, you can't yep. confirmation or whatever afterward because the bounce already happens. And that's what you want. You want that instantaneous, there's my two bucks. Thank you. Yeah. I'll take you know, like. and, and that's been something too that I've been doing. It's like I keep trying to hold for more and more and more. And it's like the, the last two days, I'm like, just take your profits, just take your profits and stop, you know, stop trying to pick up the whole, you know, the big old bite of it, you know, and hit these grand slams Pieces and stuff. Pieces of the pie, baby. Yep. Pieces of the pie. Hey, hey, look at NFL X. Like I said, I told you, see 575. Yep. But look at this, you guys. I guarantee you, NVDA is going to hit. You know, at least it's going to hit my first red line here. If you're watching my lobby, where you can see my chart, this six fifteen. You know, I think did we hit six fifteen? You know, we're right at six fifteen, and then I think we go to six sixteen fifty one. You know, and that's all because of that bounce off of the one hour candle. So I would tell new traders again. I'm new too, so take this with a grain of salt. But man, try the larger time frames. It's just adding so much more confidence to my trading because the larger time frames. 100% boss. I, you don't get into it early. A lot of traders even still trade this like us. Unfortunately, I love Sean, but I'll see him in the one minute time frame. Well, that only influences other traders to be in the one minute time frame. And I'm like, you're trading the spy one minute time frame an hour after the opening bell. You're one of the few far or whatever. I was trying to say what the, the Marines saying is. You're one of the few, the proud. <laughs> you better be careful trading that one minute time frame. Yeah. You better be for sure. Uh, or a Navy SEAL, because that is some very tough sledding in a one-minute time frame. I like it. Yeah, get those larger time frames for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, w I would tell beginner traders to stay away from the one-minute time frame. You know, your emo are you know emotions are already jumpy and 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 you know tough to to control. The one minute does not help at all because you're just watching those candles go up and down and up and down. You know, so I, I feel like the larger time frames have really helped control my emotions too. Yep, yep. Um, what was I going to ask you? Trend lines. You and I were talking about that the other day, and you kind of mentioned because I'm I've been really bad. I'm good with the key levels, but I'm really bad with trend lines. So do you go through the you go at the bottom wicks. You go through bodies. What do you do on your trend lines? Your uptrends and downtrends. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, you're talking about where I put them in next. We we're going to this over the day, weren't we? Yeah. Uh huh. Let me get it pulled up right here. I'm going to get the candlestick confirmation. This will also show you. Here we go. I think I was all put in the chat. I think it's the Marines, though, because Dippy said, <laughs> the, there it is. The, the few, the proud. proud. It, it, yeah. The Marines. Yeah. The few. Marines. I was like, oh, the few, the proud Marines. Like, Come on now. Come on, Dippy. I was a Marine. Psych. Just kidding. All right. So let's get into candlestick confirmation. Let's see. Own, which is awesome because then we're getting into trend lines. We'll do it trend lines. So you can see right here, and that one's not even that good. So I don't even like that. One. I don't even like that. One. Let's go to Kansas. Let's, go, let's get into something a little bit tighter here. Let's go to Seminole. Let's get into Seminole. Oh, I don't even like that. Did you actually have a lesson pulled up on this already? Yeah, I've got multiple lessons. Oh, right on. I'm the man. You, know, you are. You got. You got this. Ah, shit. Forget it. You know what? I'm just gonna do the few, the proud. Uh, <laughs> yeah, about that one. I'm trying to find my lesson that I have, and here's a good example of what I typically do. But here we go. I want into the bodies of the candles. You know, I have some of these that are okay. a little, uh, 
lazy in my opinion. I would have this one up even tighter. See, I would have it starting there, but I would have that into that body of the candle and more of these bodies of the candles because then you even get a better candlestick confirmation right here for the entry for the short on down. So I want, that's why I don't care about the wicks because the, that's the reason why I teach candlestick confirmation, right? Well, if I don't care about the wicks really so much, at least when it comes to these small mid cap plays, I really don't, you're gonna roll right through the majority of the time. What you're looking for is to get in with the bodies of the candle so that way you can get a better entry up top because yeah, did, did that mine those wicks at all? We're in a one minute time frame. No, RBLX, Roblox did not get three shits so, about the lower shadow. So, but AK, really fast. So your green line there, like this green green candle that you have by the wick there, I would have pushed that line up more into your body. And then what's yeah. screwing me is then I think I get a candlestick closed below it up top and then I get screwed on the trade. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is the red line though. I don't know. I don't. I, this is where you need to have your line in. But you okay? But you don't know where that line is yet per se, right? Like if I'm going to that, go to that middle candle where you got it through the bottom of that wick, the one up okay. a little bit. That one. This, yeah, I would have put that that uh, trend line up into the body of it. Right. And then it would have screwed me up top. Right. That's where I think. Uh, if I, that's why I wish I did this up top a little bit more. I, I think it would have been super close. I don't know if it really would have. It may have though. But that's what I'm looking for. I always put them in with the with the regardless. I mean, I know it maybe would have gotten you there, but look at these when you, <clears> they all go down. They may go back up a little bit on you if you're looking at it. But any of these trend lines I see, when you, in my opinion, when you have a trend that has, in my opinion, three touches if not four, uh -huh. has last hour if not an hour and a half, which all of these are really long trend lines for the most part. Yeah, those are long. Going to crack. They're going to crack, and they're going to crack really good. You know, so if you ever get a trend line that lasts this long and it has a beautiful and I don't have anything on it, but I wish I could come over here and like add a line in right here, a top up trend channel. Uh -huh. is almost perfect. Following that, following that channel right. of the trend up. Yeah, that is ideal an ideal trend right there. You know, you almost have it again right here where you could start the resistance there and go straight on up to that. And there's your top resistance on what that trend. When you have a trend that looks that good, that is what you're looking for. And you can see here. Uh, this is a different time frame. This is at the uh, seminar last year. I forget that before I got I haven't used freaking PowerPoint so long. I'm full screen. But it doesn't matter. Again, this is a one minute. This is a, a two minute. That's a three minute. And that's a five minute. Same trade. Same setup. This is why I love that first, that one minute candle. Because candlestick confirmation. You can see really close in with the bodies of the candles. Got our candlestick confirmation right there. I'm getting the best entry. Okay. If yep. I have the three minute time frame, I've got to do point of no return. That sucks. I'm not, you know, it's either A, I just got to jump in or I'm not filled till down there. The two minute, well, I just kind of went through and just showed traders what to be looking for. Uh -huh. Not so bad. The five minute, actually, when you put it in, you see the same channel overall, but it's just more sharp up because it's in a five minute time frame. Uh -huh. And I, I have no idea what happened here on think or something like that. But anyway, but you can see right here, it's still not a bad entry, but it did come back up. And I know a lot of traders, oh crap, it's back on up. Again, when you have a trend line. You got that retest. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's just. The, this is what I'm looking for. Day in, day out. Last an hour. Last two hours like this trend line last, which I think was a little over an hour, is in my opinion. I think it was somewhere right around there. Every single time. This one, not an hour, but again, you're kind of looking for the same purpose. The, the same, what you're looking for is the, the, the parallel uptrend channel. So if I came into any of these, and I can go down to any one of these, and most of them have a perfect uptrend resistance area that would match the trend line. The other thing you're looking for in trend lines, too, which this one kind of shows you that, Look how the highs get, a, the, the bounces get a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Every bounce getting a little bit smaller off of that trend line. That is A1A ideal for what you're looking for for a short. And typically, you're going to get that. A good a good crack, yeah, yeah. So the lower highs on that trend line is another thing I'm always looking for. Either, whether it's perfectly parallel or lower highs. I don't want like, you know, like just the wheel throw instance, a bounce here. And then this bounce is smaller and smaller. And this bounce right here goes all the way up to like, we'll just go where we at two. We'll go up to 250, right? So we just made this weird random movement. And then, then I'm starting to go, this is kind of weird. I don't like this. This isn't really running parallel anymore. We know this is where the true tops are coming. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't want out of nowhere this to go whoop. And now it's got this weird new pattern to it. Uh -huh. now I wouldn't like it nearly as much. I would be careful with that. Now on that chart too, I know it's small, but that's something I'm looking at. Cause you can see the bodies um, aren't breaking the other bodies, you know, they're all, they're all wicking up. Nothing's closing above the other bodies. Right. Yeah. 
and that's the main thing you're looking for overall. You know, I'm, I'm in a one minute time frame. I know the game stopped there, so and I think right here was what I do. I love this. I start going into other time frames, so you can kind of see the same effect. There's the uh, five minute time frame. Oh, I guess I just did two. I thought I did more than two, but there you go. You can see it a little bit better and cleaner now in a five minute time frame. But typically, that's about how I'm having it. If anything, I'd have this line a little bit lower, so it's in with those bodies of the candles and running down a little bit more smoothly in there. If I fix it a little bit. Um, no, tr there, there's very, I mean, you get some perfect trend lines, you know what I'm saying? But it's not like it's every one of them are just this perfect ideal. Yeah. Um, this one's pretty nice and perfect where it's got bounces. Um, you got the perfect uptrend channel. You don't get, they're not always like that, but that's what I'm looking for. I'll just get out of this and let's see if I can't find one from today. Has anything got a trend? And that's my thing. The trend lines are kind of subjective a little bit, you know? Yep. So boom, boom. This right here right so that that's where i put my trend line now again where are you getting in at at this point you want three minute candlestick confirmation even if you do you still get some good movement down you're still missing some pieces of the pie but not a ton of the pie uh, but that's kind of where i'd have my trend right i'd have it in with the bodies of the candles about as tight as i can some wicks are on there and that's fine but that's really about how to, if it, in the current trend line i'd start it right here at the base of that candle just because it makes sense in this point not trying to go down here or anything like that if it makes sense, and maybe it really does at this point, which is really weird. Maybe it gets pretty close, but I'm not really worried about that. Main reason is, what what's the trend now? What trend are you in now? Because trends keep setting and resetting and setting and resetting. So this is your current trend. It has nothing to do with what we did earlier in the day. This is it. You know, this is your new trend. Get it in there as tight as you can with the bodies of the candles. Yeah. No, it looks good. Yeah. Makes sense to me. I think I, I mean that'll definitely help me for the trend lines. Right. Yep. Yeah, no, here's another one too. Like I know I went back over that one too, and these are pretty close, I guess. And this is the similar last year. Let's cancel confirmation. But this is pretty much about it. You know, I may have this maybe a tad tighter, but not much tighter. Same thing here. This is about as tight as I'd want to get that. Maybe here's another one about as tight as I'd get that. Maybe a little tighter in there, but not too much tighter. And that way you get nice, good, solid candlestick confirmation. Now you're not always going to get it. More like day like this. Back in February of 2022, this is back when we had stocks run a little bit more technically sound than we have here over the past year, in my opinion. Um, we used to have technically soundness of these large cap plays, and boy, sometimes it's, it's getting a little erratic. But, I mean, just how, look how easy these trend cracks are. Trend line crack, there's a nice move. Trend line crack, very nice move. Trend line crack, very nice move. Even right here, trend line crack, pretty nice move. You can go to the downtrend, and same mm -hmm. thing. Downtrend break, downtrend break, downtrend break, right? So pretty easy to look for what you're looking for overall again uh, at first i think for most traders it takes a while to, to get really good at putting these lines in where they need to be in but over time keep adjusting keep adapting figure out and this is why i came up with candlestick confirmation truly to the dot in 2020 was this right here i was putting my lines in getting as tight as i could into the bodies of the candles not worrying about the wick now maybe we have wicks on it right but the main thing is getting in as tight as you can with the rest of those bodies of the candles it helps out quite a bit uh, versus oh, on the wick or on the top on the, and you can do that and you can do that but your entries just won't be as good or as, as tight as if you get it in with the bodies of the candles well yeah and again that's where it's you get that candlestick confirmation because if that candlestick closes below those wicks then then that's a good sign for the entry right yeah right, right, right. hey hey, hey going, going back to NVD NVDA hit exactly what I was saying Hit that 615.01, we bounced right off it. Came right back down to where that entry would have been again, and we're bouncing off it again. So, again, that's just cool to, to see for me, even if I don't enter the trade. And I think other new traders, too, because I used to be like, suck, I missed it. Gosh dang it, if only I would have done this, if only I would have done that. And that's still something I struggle with all the time. But I'm starting to learn just like, hey, just let it give you confidence and, and fuel you for when you still when you start really trading those, you know? And I'll say real quickly, with Tippy said, never, always the bodies of the candles, never the wicks. Again, unless you just want a, um, a lower entry. Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, let's see here. Okay, well, you can have both if you want, but even when I draw my trend lines, I am in with the bodies of the candles, never the wicks, because I want the best, tightest entry. I don't care about wicks. Yeah. Wicks can go, they can go take a you-know-what. <laughs> Are you um, small cap plays? I'm in a one minute time frame. Okay. One time frame for small caps, unless we're in later in the day. If we get to this point in the day, I will start moving to a three minute time frame for candlestick confirmation most of the time. Makes so sense. One minute, one minute until about lunchtime, and then I get to a three minute. For large cap plays, the confirmation, I'm always in a three minute time frame. Always. I'll use the five minute, but for candlestick confirmation for entries, it's the three minute. It's the three minute for large caps. Okay. What about mid caps? Are you about the same thing? Three minute? 
Yeah, mid cap three minute as well. Always three minute for mid cap. Okay. Large cap, I'll, 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 I don't ever use confirmation in the five minute. Um, you can if you want to. Just a lot of the time, you're just going to get a worse entry, and that's the thing for me. I'm trying to. Get, I, I've done all the studying. Uh, ah, there's another trader chat that actually kind of back tested is the astral trader if he's in chat, astral trading or astral trader he's in chat. Um, he even did it. You know, the one two. He all did, he did the, 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 uh, the different time frame for large caps and realized three minute was the best. I'm like, hey, I can even dip you with the trend lines. Like, I, I've done all the back testing. I mm -hmm. am a 92% win rate for a reason. I've done all the losing, so that way you guys don't have to lose if you just listen and do what I tell you to do. Put the trend lines in with the bodies of the candles, you know? Use the three minute time frame for large caps for confirmation. Use the one minute for small caps for confirmation. It's going to give you the best results. And here's NFLX all the way up to 577, just boosting away. But uh, Good. Having, having the right time frame really changes, changes everything in trading, in my opinion. Seriously, that that changed that changed everything for me. I mean, again, I'm still not you know anything crazy. Shoot, I had my first profitable month last month. I made twenty five hundred dollars, but you know just just everything moving forward, I can tell just getting that right time frame for me instead of trading the one minute. Definitely, definitely away from the one minute time frame. I don't trade that at all. Yep, yeah, I remember when I first started uh, trading the uh, large cap plays in twenty twenty two with traders, and of course doing the one on ones at one. Large, because you know, of course, me, I'm not going to be the a hole and say, well, you do that. I'm trading small caps today. Like, you know, I was going to open up the, you know, Pandora's box, so to speak. Like, hey, you want to do that? Let's get it done. Let's figure this out. Let's trade some large caps. My dumb ass would be trading in the one minute time frame where I was when I first started. And unfortunately, took some L's and realized, yeah, it's not the one minute. And then really realized that early in 2022, and started realizing from there, we started moving to the three minute to the five minute, etc. Yep. Um, really helping me out, at least when it comes to those bigger plays. Now, small cap plays, yes, truly. That makes sense. Free market, whatever it might be, you could trade one minute. Here's why. What are most traders using? Most traders in the small cap world are using the one minute time frame because there's a lot of newbies out there, etc. There's not, you know, prop firms, there's not um, hedge funds, there's not all these big dogs with hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars going into plays, right? Not, nah, they're not. So you don't have to worry about that. One minute time frame is fine. That's what most are using. Large cap plays, that's much different. You know, you don't know if there's some people in the one, the three, the five, the two, yep. the ten, and the hourly. So you got to get somewhere in between there and get out of just the one because it's not just the one. You may have 5% in the one, 3% in the two, 10% in the three, 5% here, 20% there. That's not the case in small caps. 50% yeah. plus the one minute. So 50% plus from the one minute, that's the one you probably should be in, honestly, because that's what traders are looking at support and resistance. Yeah, Buffett probably does not use the one minute. Buffett doesn't yeah. use the four hour or the, you know, the whatever, the one hour, the daily or something. He is not, or the weekly probably actually even, or the monthly. He is not ever concerned about no one minute time frame, three minute, five minute, ten minute for sure. Ooh, Spy, spy, just, hit my, spy just hit my waterfall strategy, AK. Oh, you with me? Did I lose you? What is waterfall? So look at the spot, look at the spy on the five minute. So if you look at the spy on the five minute, I always look at three green candles. Again, I'm on a larger time frame, and the green candles are getting smaller and smaller as it as it goes up. So I kind of call it like climbing up a mountain, and then you just get this huge red candle, you know, falling like a waterfall off the side of the mountain. Now for like an entry on this though, I always kind of wait for it to come back um, around this first and second green candle. So in this instance on spy. You know, around 488.60, 488.50 would be my entry. I always, for me, I always wait for breaks and retests. Uh, so I don't go straight for a break. Um, I look for retest levels myself, um, and so that's that's my waterfall strategy. But right now, I mean, this is, I mean, that's a huge dump on the spy. So I don't know if it's going to get back up there. And something that I've started realizing is like, if I miss the trade, I miss the trade. But that's stopping me from just chasing things and FOMOing into trades. Definitely the worst thing most traders do. I have, uh, luckily, I'm, luckily, never really had that much of a, a battle of FOMO. I did early on when you pour small caps and chasing those plays. But yeah, I got over that really quickly because I knew. Just think Deck used to talk about how I mean, you got tomorrow. But he'd always mention it. You have tomorrow. There's so many days. You're going to see more breakouts. There's going to be a thousand more of these. Yes. That's more and more in my head. Like, hey, just let it go. You know, even if it was a play like that, you can like. You know, like NBA that you call out and watch it go, and you're like, how did I watch that? I called it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure other people do this too, but it's like every single day I, I close out my day, I'm like, gosh dang it, I missed that move. Next day, gosh dang it, I you know, missed that move. And it's like, 
you guys, every single day there's a mover, you know, it's just, so don't, don't feel like you're not going to, you know, like you're not going to find something else. There's always something in the next day. And that's, that's something I keep talking to myself about too. And, you know, being okay with missing something, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. but controlling the emotions in trading is probably, probably the biggest thing that I didn't realize I was going to be dealing with when I first started trading. I was just like, oh man, find support, find resistance, just trade those, you know, I didn't, I didn't take into account emotions at all. And, and that might sound stupid, you know, now, you know, trading for a while, but I didn't, I didn't think that was going to affect my trading at all. Wow, I was wrong. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that's one of the biggest thing people don't realize uh, early on that they're going to have to go through this uh, roller coaster, emotional roller coaster, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. That's what. Well, that's what I did uh, to start this month. Like I was just rolling. I don't think I had one red day the first two weeks of of this month, and then all of a sudden Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Monday, and Tuesday, I got I got really really confident, and I just started going in heavy shares. You know, like Tesla. I went in 500 shares um, on one trade. I ended up, I didn't manage my risk. I ended up losing $900 on that trade on Monday, you know? And then I kept trying to dig myself out of the hole and I made it worse. I ended up losing $1,500 on Monday. It literally ate up all my profits that I made the entire month, you know? And so like I was talking about the roller coaster ride of emotions. I then started getting down. I'm like, gosh, dang it. I thought I was feeling good about this and everything. And then... Come Wednesday and Thursday, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go back to 25 shares and 50 shares and kind of build that confidence back up. And so I went down to smaller shares. But the second I start feeling like, man, I want to make a whole bunch of money today, I swear I do nothing but lose money once I start getting that mindset. Yep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Trust me. I know. That's most traders I work with. That's kind of what happens, unfortunately, for most traders. And I hate it. You know, it's it's, it's, it's the mindset and the, the mental, mental process is all it is really for the most part. Where if you low, hey, let's just let's just walk away. I'll be back here tomorrow. Let's not make this any worse. Yeah. I'm not at that level yet that I can get back even half of this probably or even maybe all of it. That day will come. Today's not the day. You know, not there yet. So yeah. Let's just go. Today, today's already bad as it is, you know, so. Yeah. most. And then I realize that later down the line where I've got to that point where. Even if I'm down or have a, you know, I'm, I'm red for the day, I know I can get back. I know I can sit back, relax, chill. But there are certain days, and I've had those red days where I'm calling it. You know, like I see it the day that it is, maybe possibly it's not that day I can get back the money because the trades really aren't there. It's a choppy, whatever. It might choppy be. day, yeah. I, I'll just stop trading. Like, hey, tomorrow you'll get all that money back, I promise you. You'll get all, and then, then I'll just be like, hey, how much are you up? Like, you know, like, you, how much are you up for the month? How much are you up? Like, let it go. Let it go. Yep. It's, it's that day. And it's hard for a human early on to do that, you know, for the first year or two. Well, we're, we're, we're prideful. I know for me, I'm prideful. I'm like, well, I don't want to take a red day, you know. Oh, yeah. Gonna ruin, <laughs> gonna ruin my green day streak, you know. I don't want to take a, I don't want to take a $500 loss, $600 loss. Like, no, I'm going to make that up right now. And then it just gets worse and worse, you know. You start revenge trading and stuff. Yeah, don't have a clear mindset. Exactly. Part. Yep, Exactly. So. Any questions you guys have in chat? Anything else? I know I'm switch, switching and hoops to trade Jedi mindset. Do you guys dimpy anyone? Master Blaster. Got that Candace confirmation question earlier. But anything else? NFLX is rolling on up here. Good some money from uh, for you guys during lunch hours if you got it. Any questions, though? Otherwise, I'm going to call it a, uh, the morning for myself here coming up here in the next five minutes or so. Yeah, and, and, and AK, if you're good with it, I saw a bunch of people asking... Um, I'll edit this up and, and chop it up and stuff and put this uh, in a YouTube video if you're okay with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I press record on mine to begin with, too, earlier, so I have this whole entire session recorded, too. So, yeah. Yeah. In case you need it, I'll have the lobby up for the rest of the day and um, go rewind the stream and watch it. Or if you don't want to rewind the stream and watch it, yep. you'll get it out there. Yeah, and also I went over one hour time frames earlier in my uh, in my lobby, so I'm gonna chop up a video and make one on that too uh, later today as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll have a few things up on my YouTube uh, channel later today. Awesome, awesome. And anytime so, you guys that, uh, need any help in the in the music world, I've got platinum albums behind me. Those are platinum three, platinum one, gold album. I can help you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, I was like, wait a second. Is he being serious here? What? <laughs> yeah, well, that out there every once in a while when I just immediately kind of get serious about something and people are like, 
I know <laughs> you you got you got me on that. I've I've got over here to my left. You can't see. I had to change my desk situation because I wanted to get a green screen. But to my left, I've got my whole Nick's wall. I, you've seen it before. I've got yeah. I've got nothing but Nick's uh, <laughs> Nick's yeah, memorabilia. Green screen, man. I was like, cause I didn't want no curtain behind me, and plus all the dogs I got. I was like, yeah, and I cool. Like, where am I gonna put a green like a curtain behind me? Yeah. Because I, like, I, like, I was gonna have to prop it up. I'm like, not happening. You know, I was like, yeah. I just I'll just make behind me cool or something. And those are those are real albums. That's a it's a Journey platinum album. That's a Duran Duran platinum album. That's a Brian Adams platinum album, and that's Hooters gold album. Dad used to work for uh, a rock and roll station. Was like the morning show host, and of course, I had tons of them. And I was like, man, you know, I, I think I've had the Journey one, the bigger one, the Journey one. For, I've had that since college. I took it up there. I thought it'd be cool, to, like hang on the wall. I'm like, oh, I got a platinum album, you know, when you're in college. Uh huh. Um, but then I went over there like about a, I forgot, sometime last year I went to my parents' house and I was like, y'all still have any more of those albums y'all used to have? I was like, I kind of want a new little, you know, something behind, you know, I was like, mom, mom loved the idea. Mom's like, oh yeah, 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 they're in the whatever closet, let me get some for you. I was like, just give me some, I don't care what they are, you know, I was like, just give me a few of them, so yeah, I thought it'd be cool. For right on. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you jumping on with me. Thank you very much, and thanks, everyone, for watching. And, you know, hopefully hopefully you guys join me over in my lobby and kind of watch me. You know, seriously, I go through the struggles as well, and that's a new trader, and I think it's kind of cool, you know, to people see that they're not alone in the journey, you know, and that, you know, other people are going through the same stuff. But kind of watch me progress as I go from, you know, where I am to I know I know where I'm going to be in the future because I'm putting in all the work, you know. Yeah, and I know Dippy was one of those funny. Dippy's probably watching. Dippy wanted kind of to do that. Back in 2022, but Sean was this is before uh, Deck kind of opened the floodgates to everybody, and I uh, was only letting certain people stream, and I think kind of gave Dippy like the, kind of the, the the cold shoulder, so to speak. And I was like, man, you know, because I know Dippy wanted to do, but that, and I thought it'd be a great, you know, great idea. Someone that's going through the journey, that's still a newer trader, that you can come over and kind of bad ideas off of, slash, you know, feel the struggle and the pain. You know, I think it's a great idea. Sean Rule used to do it. Sean Rule Man Bun used to do that. Actually, he was the one that kind of did that for a while as well. So. It's one of those ones where yeah, you do, and that definitely helps out a lot of traders and anyone else. I mean, you know, go definitely go for mom, but any of these newer guys, um, from Yeah Buddy to Liquid and all these other guys that are doing really good, um, Chan can trade. That's another one Chan can. That you know, these newer guys, go give them some love. Um, of course, Mom has been in chat for quite a while. We all know that. So go, you know, we all know Mom, but I've said that in chat before, forever ago. And Deck was before even I was streaming. Deck brought in these kind of new nobodies that no one really knew, and no one went over there. And I'm like, Deck, you've got to. No, people are going to go over like J trades if they know them. Active yeah. trader, mom, of course, me, right? They know Kush. They know these traders. They know Caesar. They, they you, well, kind of grew up in chat, the ones they know. And I'm like, these newer traders may not get that. And so, regardless, that's why I'm saying, you reiterating you guys, go show them some love, show them some respect. And of course, Mamba as well, when he's streaming, you know, that's a, a person to go over there. And uh, like I said, I wanted, like, well, that's the reason I'm doing these one on ones, because I know it helps traders going over and talking with someone that's struggling and going through the same in and out day process and the mental process that you're going through is going to help you to know that you're not the only one because we always want to think we're going through this all by ourselves because we're at home yep. struggle we know that I'm yep. there. i was there we do struggle it's that's just it's we just ourselves sitting here behind the computer screen to Jay, you know relation sorry did i lose you 100%, oh there you are 100%. Yeah. I'll let you go, boss. Uh, have a good weekend. Yeah, for half a second, but I got you. I yeah, got yeah, you. I got yep. you. yeah. Have a good weekend, boss. I'll see you. Sounds good, AK. Okay. We'll start doing this like once a month. I say like once a month we should do this for sure. Boss. Right on, man. I, hey, I appreciate your feedback and all the help you've given me with your one-on-ones and stuff too. So you guys, same thing. If you guys want help, you know, with AK, the one-on-ones are really, really good. Um, so anyways, just some, uh, I guess a little bit of a plug for you too because it's very helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, just here to help you guys as much as I can. From mental wise, you know, being your coach, your mentor, uh, psychologist, psych, you know, therapist, you want to call them bitch, complain, <laughs> moan, I'm here for you, whatever yep. you need. And Mamba, good luck with your Knicks. I know we'll talk more, but hey, I'd yep. love to see the Knicks win this year. I mean, hey, honestly, I, I'm with you. I'd love to see it. Go from the Nuggets that haven't ever won, right? And then you go to the Knicks who haven't won in forever. I would love it. Hey, like, mark, mark this down. I'm calling Knicks to the conference finals, okay? I love that. Give me some some kind of new something new. Give me some let's, parody let's, game, not the same damn teams that are always going. Let's you know? do it. All right, man. Well, I, I hope you have a good weekend, and thanks everybody for watching. Like I said, I'll put this up on my YouTube later. Uh, you can find me at the Mamba Trader on YouTube. Okay. Go follow him. He's a good man. I'll talk to you. Thanks, soon. AK. All right, bye, buddy.